Okay, welcome back Pokemon Trainers. We are here in Frankfurt Regionals, uh, round two actually now. And I'm here with uh, Lou the Pikachu, and we're going to have a really nice match on screen for you. Uh, yeah, now. fingers crossed the internet does hold. Yeah. Um, but just before we jump into the game, we did promise you some exciting statistics from the tournament. Um, there are actually 256 players in total for video game across all three divisions, and 236 for Masters. That is the biggest European regional we have ever had. Eight rounds of Swiss, um, and yeah, eight rounds of Swiss, and top 16 cut, which is very exciting. Yeah, I don't that's, think we've ever that's had that. really cool. Um, it's, I think it's a, if, it, if, it, if we had that, it's a long time ago in Europe. Um, so we got one of the biggest regionals now in a completely new format. First regionals of Europe in this, in this actually in this format. Uh, so that's, that's just super exciting. It's a lot of firsts. And I think we're actually going to have the first four restricted legendary that's never been in VGC yeah. before. Yeah. Uh, Dust Main Necrozma, I believe, will be coming up on mm -hmm. stream. But we're going to be jumping into round two very soon for you now. The players are seated. They are ready to go. I think they're going to get the signal for the judge now so that they can start the stream and we'll be able to jump straight into it. Yeah, and uh, we got here, we got kind of the German showdown here for you. We are in Frankfurt, so now we got two Germans on stream. And on the left, you can see here, it's uh, Nemanja uh, Sanvich uh, from, from Germany. And on the right, we have Eloy Hahn, also from Germany. Um, both kind of old school players. Uh, Nemanja has actually been a caster as well in his, in his career. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it's always fun to see him on the other side uh, <laughs> exactly. of the screen. Exactly. He's no stranger to the camera here, yeah. and it's nice to be able to get him here. While we're in a German regional as, as well, jumping onto the game. Um, but, you know, game one, we saw some, um, sorry, in round one, we saw some interesting Pokemon coming out with, like, the Xerneas and the Groudon. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that coming out in the action here. Um, but, of course, both these players, um, well known in VGC, and we've we'll got the teams right out here. So let's jump straight into it. On Nemanja's side, we have got the Groudon Persian. Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Dustmane Necrozma, and the Snorlax Pokemon we have seen so many times before. Um, oh, sorry, I believe that was on Eloy's, e Eloy's one. The teams have swapped around a little bit. Um, and Nemanja will be running the Incineroar, Crobat, Tapu Koko, Aboma Snow, the Solgaleo, and the Kyogre. Yeah, so we see a few interesting Pokemon. Uh, it's our first Dawn Necrozma that we see. Uh, and we see it surrounded by a lot of support Pokemon. We see uh, an Alolan Persian. Um, next to it is Incineroar, so we have two Dark types, both with Fake Out. And one thing from the Manja's team that really surprises me is that Abominus Snow. That is, that is kind of an interesting weather Pokémon next to all these big, pri uh, big kind of legendary Pokémon. Exactly, um, bringing the hail instead of yeah. rain and sun, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, and obviously that's going to be able to apply a lot of um, pressure against the opposing Groudon as well. Mm -hmm. Although obviously um, a Bomber Snow doesn't want to take any fire type moves. No. The grass type moves it can deal out and the ice type moves are going to be able to chip away at the ground type Groudon. Like, I think it misses its fire type from 2016. Yeah, but interesting kind of chemistry that you have here. Uh, even though you kind of interfere with the weather of your Kyogre, uh, the one thing you can do is if this Kyogre goes for a big water spout and for example, Nemanja expects a Groudon switch in from Elo's side, he can switch in his own Abominus Snow, um, get that hill up, and make water, make water Spout still a one-hit KO on that Groudon, uh, which is kind of an interesting mechanic, uh, where we had in 2016 usually used uh, Rayquaza for that kind of mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, Rayquaza isn't quite as used as much in, uh, in this format right now, um, but Abominus Snow could actually kind of function in kind of the same way as well. And under Tailwind, could even spam a lot of uh, Blizzard damage, uh, and it, with Grass Knot, it does a lot of damage to opposing Kyogre and Groudon as well. It certainly does, and Crobat as well, a Pokemon that's seen a rise in this format so far. Um, we've seen it, you know, using things like Tailwind and Taunt, um, and actually it's jumping out onto the field at the moment. Apologies, the screen I think is the wrong way round, so bear with us. Um, it's going to be the Groudon and the uh, Alolan Persian there for um, Eloy, I believe it is, on that side, and then Nemanja's got the Crobat and the Kyogre. Yeah, so indeed, uh, Nemanja is actually the one leading the, the Crobat and the Kyogre here. Um, and I think, uh, judging from the abilities there, we see that the Kyogre is actually faster than the Groudon. Um, and I think one of the things, if there wasn't a fake out on Nemanja's side, one of the things Eloy probably wanted to go for was going for that Obama Snow switch in uh, and a Water Spout. But now that Nemanja actually has that fake out pressure available, uh, he's pretty free to kind of reposition himself, uh, maybe go for some damage on this Kyogre, maybe on this Crobat as well. Um, but if you're Nemanja, you probably want to make sure that you get your Groudon out of here as well, so you can kind of get control of the weather, uh, just in case Eloy switches his Kyogre. Um, because I think this weather war is really important here. 
Exactly, and I don't think he's got a way to really stop the Tailwing. So obviously in a focus on that Crobat. Fake out from Alolan Potion is not going to be helping it out at all, but we're actually going to see a switch straight away. It's going to be the Tapu Fini coming onto the field there as opposed to the Groudon. I'm going to set up that beautiful Misty terrain. As Kyoko does go for a Protect, revealing it is possibly not one of the choice variants. You never know, could be a choice Scarf Protect, as Tailwind does go up. So, you know, maybe it doesn't need a choice Scarf if you've got Tailwind helped out by your buddy Crobat. Um, and the Kyogre there will not be taking any damage thanks to that Protect, but now um, Nemanja looking in such a strong position. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it looked like the, the Persian, uh, I would assume, is went for a parting shot there, uh, hoping to maybe lower the special attack of that Kyogre a little bit. Uh, but it actually didn't do that at all. Um, but even though uh, Nemanja actually has the Tailwind set up, uh, the Kyogre is still in the sun, so he doesn't really love that at all. Uh, but a Water Spout and maybe a Super Fang combination should still do a lot of damage to this Persian, uh, as well as to this Tapu Fini. Uh, and even though Tapu Fini wouldn't take a lot from his Water Spout, it's not going to do a lot that, not back to this Kyogre either. Uh, so the Manja now has the speed control, and I think it's kind of uh, he has kind of a lot of ways to maneuver himself. Maybe bring in his Solgaleo, uh, maybe the Abominus Snow if he brought that, uh, and offer some more offensive pressure. Exactly, well switches coming left, right, and center here. Um, as Nemanja will send out the Obama Snow. Yeah, so, so that Pokemon we talked about, I'm so excited to see it here. It's one of the Pokemon whose names is troublesome as well. So we will do our very best to get through. But will it be causing trouble for Eloy? Um, won't be doing anything to that Persian, though. It's shot right back to its trainer as the Necrozma does join the field. The first time I believe we've ever seen it on a European um, stream as Water Spout comes out from Kyogre. So it's a good amount of damage to the Necrozma, but of course Tapu Fini able to take that like an absolute champion. Yeah, Tapu Fini didn't take a lot of damage at all, and retaliates with a Nature's Madness here, uh, which is actually a good option on these really defensive Tapu Finis. Uh, Moonblast usually wouldn't do a lot of damage at all, but with this Nature's Madness, he's still able to chip a lot of damage to this Kyogre. Uh, and out of the cross is actually in a really good position. Uh, it did take a lot of damage from that Water Spout, and we see actually a leftover Kyogre, uh, which is also something that you don't see a lot at all, I think. Um, but it really helps, especially when you set up your own uh, hill. You don't want to take too much damage of it. Yeah, it's And with the leftovers, it. you kind of counteract that, that ability. Um, but Eloy, uh, switching in his, his Necrozma um, is in a good position, but it did already take half uh, of, its, of its health there. So I'm not sure if... if yeah, I, I, would, I would think that a Blizzard and an Origin Pulse, for example, might actually be able to pick up the KO here. And if it actually does, that would put Nemanja in such a good position. And you, you can't really afford to switch in your Groudon into that either. Very true. Groudon doesn't want to be taking any of those Ice-type moves. Um, Tapu Fini is going to retreat, though, from the field. Actually, we are going to see that Groudon come in. So potentially a risky play from Eloy here. Um, I'm going to bring the Sun back up so the Water Spouts won't be dealing as much damage. But any of those Ice and Grass-type moves it might take from the Obama Snow are still going to be super strong. Going to be a Scold, though, coming out into the Necrozma. Don't have to worry about a burn with that Misty Terrain on the field. And it's actually going to be the Grass Knot. So a double up into that slot. Nemanja really wanting to get this Pokemon off the field. Um, oh. It wasn't very effective, though. Trick Room coming up, though. So wow. is this going to be a Min Speed Groudon? Uh, I mean, I mean, we already saw that it was actually slower than that Kyogre, so uh, we're not sure if it min speed yet, uh, but it's definitely slower than the Kyogre, so it's definitely a good position for uh, Eloy there. But on the other hand, uh, Trick Room sh uh, Tailwind should be running out soon for Nemanja. Uh, he only has one turn remaining, uh, so if he just protects his Abominus Snow there, um, that thing in Trick Room is actually really scary as well. It certainly is. Um, because it has, it has a really low speed, um, but it kind of can function both in Tailwind and in Trick Room. So I'm not sure if, if setting up Trick Room for your opponent's Abominus now is actually the play where you want to go for there. Definitely. It's not the Pokemon you want on your opponent. You're sort of helping them out a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting with the Scrawdon because it's, it's a team that I've sort of played around with myself where you have a really, really slow Groudon, you get Precipice Blades going, and potentially if you can get your Tapu Fini back in, if it's a Pokemon packing something like Gravity or Swagger, um, you can go for some really crazy plays. Um, but the Groudon actually going to leave the field and the Persian coming in. A Pokemon, again, notoriously quite fast, um, so doesn't necessarily want to be in Trick Room. Um, Crobat as well joining the field for the Kyogre. So both of these um, restricted are being sort of shot out from their weather, potentially wants to reset it later on. Protect from a Bomber Snow as the Moonlight, I believe that was, came out oh, from wow. the Necrozma. So boosting up its health. That was a really cool play. I haven't seen that move on the, that Pokemon so far in this tournament. Like, no. Just in practice or anything. Really good play there by, uh, by Eloy uh, because the Necrozma is already such a bulky Pokemon. And I think if you're Nemanja, you were already happy that, that it, you were able to get off so much damage to it. But now it's almost completely healed up again. The sun helps um, it out. And the sun helps definitely helps it out there. So really well played. And he now has fake out pressure as well, uh, which means he can just double up into this Obama Snow there, um, which would put Eloy in actually a really good position. Exactly. And you know, potentially if he 
sort of regrets maybe setting up that trick room. If he goes for something like the fake out, he can reverse it. Um, but Kyogre is going to come back onto the field now, uh, resetting up its rain. So if it is going to go for something like Moonlight again, it's not going to be regaining as much health, but it's already got quite a lot at the moment. I don't think yeah. it's going to be going for that. Nemanja actually going for the double switch. So Crobat is going to retreat and out will come the Incineroar. So going to be firing off and intimidate here. Um, Luna Persian probably not going to worry too much. Um, the Crozma though is one of those Pokemon that does like to keep its attack stat relatively high. Um, I'm going to see it here. Go! Oh, I love these moves that are coming <laughs> out here at the moment. Going to jump right up into the sky here. Yeah, that looks so good. Um, but, it's not gonna do, yeah, <laughs> but it's not going to do a lot of damage to this Incineroar at all, uh, resisting that attack. And a person actually went for a foul play, just not, not going for the fake out, just going for the foul play instead. But a really good switch in by, uh, uh, by Nemanja there. Um, He's really adjusted up his ball positioning, though. He can yeah, now definitely. potentially go for something like the fake out in the next turn and get some really good damage off of that Kyogre. Yeah, and if you're if you're looking at something to really counter this this Necrozma, uh, Incineroar is, is kind of one of your safest bet there uh, with Flare Blades, with Knock Off, uh, being able to do a lot of damage. And I think the the good thing about his position here is he can go for a Flare Blitz uh, and maybe a Water Spout. And even if Eloy um, tries to get in his Groudon and make sure that the uh, the Water Spout damage is reduced, he will actually boost the Flare Blitz power. Uh, so that way you offer pressure no matter what your opponent does, um, which I think is why he takes so much time right now. He's really thinking about uh, what kind of switch he can make here. Uh, and maybe his best way is if he can protect an Acrosma. But we saw Moonlight, so it's it's pretty safe to assume that he might not carry something like Protect, uh, which could be a really safe slot to just double up if you're in a manja. Exactly. In this format, you know, we don't have anything like the Z moves anymore or the Mega Stones. So all the items are really, really crucial. That's why we see knock off so much in this format as well, because you're pretty much always guaranteed to knock an item off. Um, but Nemanja actually going to go straight for the switch here, going to bring in the Tapu Fini and reset up that Misty Terrain. Doesn't want to take any potential um, sort of skull burns or potentially flare blitz burns. Just wants to keep his Pokemon as healthy as it can. But um, Stone Edge coming out there, actually going to connect onto the Incineroar. Um, it's going to be able to munch this little berry. We we're just talking about items and we get to see the item that I think Incineroar is very well known for having, particularly in the last season. Um, and it's actually going to go straight for that knockoff. So all the moves we're mentioning are all coming out here. Um, oh, weakness, weakness policy. policy. I was about to say, I might need your help pitching together some German wow. to work out the item, but thankfully the animation has helped us out. So this Necrozma is going to be looking even more powerful. Skull coming out into it once again, and it does actually pick up the KO there. Yeah, so ooh, that's really unfortunate there for Eloy. He does get up his weakness policy, but then oh, it doesn't lift quite lift the double up of these these attacks there. Not with the rain active. No, uh, and it was actually a really slow Necrozma because we saw the Incinera outspeed it. Um, Quite of an interesting set with Moonlight and Stone Edge. Uh, you usually don't find room for, for both of these um, when you want Sun Steel Strike as well. Uh, usually you want a Psychic type coverage uh, next to that. Um, but but Aelor actually choosing for Stone Edge there. And with a high critical hit chance, um, Nemanja could have been in a really tough position. But now he's looking really strong. He certainly is. And again, that um, Stone Edge is a good move to have against maybe something like the Crobat as well. And all the sort of flying types we see in the format at the moment, it just gives you that extra option to be able to pick up a KO here or there. Um, but Alolan Persian going to jump right back in and get that fake up pressure once again. Yeah, exactly. And so that at least gives him a little bit more breathing room. Um, but this Tapu Fini is still not going to do a lot of damage um, to these Pokemon. Um, usually they don't, these kind of support Tapu Finis don't carry mud or muddy water anymore. Uh, we already saw Nature's Madness. Um, so it could be something like Icy Wind, uh, maybe Heal Pulse. Um, but either way, I think he really needs to make sure that he gets a way to um, to offer more offensive pressure because he only has his Groudon left to really do a lot of damage. And Crobat once again rejoining the field here. Um, potentially, you know, the fake out on the switch wouldn't have mattered anyway. Um, but that inner focus once again just going to be in play as Kyogre goes for a Protect. So Eloy here, um, sorry, Nemanja really playing defensively at the moment, doing lots of switches, changing up his ball positioning quite a lot. But I think that icy wind there, um, going to be connecting um, onto the um, crowbat there. Sorry, we're having a few technical issues our end. Um, and it's, we're not too sure what's going on on the stream here. Hopefully it's running really well on your side. Um, but I believe the Persian actually has shot right back. Um, and let's just see who's coming out. It's actually going to be the Groudon, so we've just rejoined the stream. Sorry about that, guys. We had a few issues our end. Couldn't see what was going on. Um, but the Sun is going to be rejoining the field as the Groudon does come back. The Leftovers, once again, activating on the Kyogre. And I really think this is one of the most unique choices of item. Um, not something we've really seen before. It's mainly a Choice Scarf, potentially even a Berry. But the Leftovers, I think, works really well on this team. Yeah, exactly. Because we saw it right now. It was at half health. And it's actually already almost getting full again. Uh, so that's really interesting there. <laughs> and... I don't think Nemanja didn't took a lot of damage in general here. Uh, and he's just slowly willing down his opponent. 
And Eloy is really struggling to do damage to, to this really bulky team that uh, Nemanja has. Exactly. We have seen all of Nemanja's Pokemon as well, so there's no secrets left to be no. revealed. And that Abomas Snow once again going to come back into play. It's got full health as well, so I think Nemanja's style at the moment of being, playing really defensively is working out for him so strong. Um, he has four Pokemon up against three, and now he's got that Tailwind. Yeah. So it, this has been a game of so many different speeds going on. Um, but actually, oh, Gravity's gravity. coming out. We mentioned this earlier. I'm honestly so excited if we see something like Gravity Swagger coming out here. That would just make me very happy. Yeah. Particularly with Precipice Blades coming out, it's now going to connect onto that Crobat, um, be able to pick up the KO against it. And I was saying Emmanuel is a Pokemon up, he's now evened the score. Yeah, but I mean, on the other hand, now you're just giving you're just giving Nemanja a free switch into this Kyogre uh, and a Water Spout Energy Ball of en or Grass Knot, for example, could just clear the board uh, for Nemanja. So even though you get this KO in the Crobat, um, I'm not sure if it's really what you want. Uh, maybe you should you wanted to focus down the Abominous Snow because this Crobat, even though it's just a Tailwind, it, it's not really threatening in another way, but now you have Tailwind. You have these two kind of Tailwind abusers on the field. Um, and if you if I look at Eloy, he only has the Persian in the back. And that should probably go down to a Water Spout from this range. Um, or it should at least take a lot of damage. So that still makes him in kind of a tough position. And even though the gravity helps him in knocking out the Crobat, uh, there's still three turns of Tailwind that he needs to survive somehow. Exactly. You definitely want to get your Groudon out just like Eloy is playing here um, so that you can potentially reset the weather later. Maybe even try and lock Nemanja down to his last two remaining Pokemon so he can't reset the weather his way. As you can see, Ooh. the damage from this Water Spout when the rain is up, Kyogre is so happy. Doesn't quite get the KO though as Grass Knot will connect into that Tapu Fini. Thankfully, not the heaviest of Pokemon, that no. Alolan Guardian. Um, very majestic in its form, but it is enough to proc that Berry though. So actually going to regain a lot more health than it started out with in this turn. And it's able to fire off another Icy Wind. So going to connect on both of um, Nemanja's Pokemon here. Going to lower their speeds a little bit. Cheeky critical hit in there as well. But you know, while the Tailwind's still active, he's got that speed advantage. Yeah, um, but at least this Ice Wind helps him a little bit. Um, he probably only needs, well, actually, it needs two more because we already saw that this Kyogre is actually faster than the Groudon. Uh, so he still needs a lot of Icy Winds <laughs> to actually get that speed advantage. Um, but at least it helps him once he can actually survive the, the Tailwind turns. And after that, it will definitely help him. But this Persian is kind of in range for anything right now. So I think Nemanja is pretty safe to just go for another Water Spout and a Grass Knot um, into that slot. And I think once uh, Eloy only has two Pokemon remaining and Nemanja can just switch out his Kyogre and bring it back in Get afterwards, that rain up. Uh, it's going to be really tough for him to actually survive that, that kind of pressure that this leftovers Kyogre puts out. We talk a lot in these kind of formats about the weather war, but yeah. it is very much true. It can be the crucial sort of turn or end game strategy that can really win you a game. And I think you sort of hit the nail on the head there, Rob, where you sort of say if you can get the um, Kyogre back in or get the Groudon in, whichever dominant weather oh, is going to no be in the out. end. No fake out. They're going to go straight for the water spout again. And we'll pick up the KO on that Lolan Persian. So like you were saying, he's now going to be forced to bring his Groudon back in, get the sun. And if Kyogre is able to survive out this turn, um, along with the Obama Snow, he'd be able to switch it out, reset that weather, and be in such a strong position. And this is the thing, if you're Tapu Fini facing down a Kyogre and a Obama Snow, there's really not a lot you can do. Nature's no. Madness, sure, get some good damage off, because I think it's the only way Tapu Fini is going to be able to do it. I'm um, going to be taking an Icy Wind in return, though. Oh, no, it wasn't uh, an Icy I think Wind. That, it was a Blizzard, actually. It was a Blizzard. Uh, not it was an upgrade. Damage at all. <laughs> no. Upgrade on the ice. <laughs> oh, but right now, yeah, this Tapu Fini is actually at really low health. And I think if this Kyogre switches out, brings it back in, um, it can even protect and get that leftovers damage, uh, leftovers healing. And this Tapu Fini might actually be in Water Spout range <laughs> afterwards. Uh, so yeah, I think really well played by Nemanja. You really covered his board position there well. Um, I think Eloy maybe overpredicted that turn a little bit. Uh, we already mentioned that he was kind of in a tough position. Uh, so he didn't went for the fake out with Persian, maybe hoping that the Kyogre would already switch out. Um, so that's why he probably went for that kind of play, but it didn't work out. Uh, Nemanja just played it safe, made sure he kept on the pressure. Uh, and now that he has three Pokemon remaining versus only the two of Eloy, he can just switch out his faster Kyogre, that's, which is faster than the Groudon, mm -hmm. and just go for a Water Spout uh, at any point after that. Exactly. I think Nemanja was really able to visualize the end sort of game situation here. He knew that yep. if he got his weather up in the end, he's going to be in such a strong position. Um, and you could see that from all of his defensive plays at the beginning. Um, I think if you're Eloy as well, looking at sort of the team that he was bringing, it did have that trick room option. Mm -hmm. And I think bringing the Groudon, revealing the gravity, he does have that option to yep. go for. Um, 
I always think you should never run press with Blades without gravity, in my <laughs> opinion. So he does have the option to go for that high offensive pressure, but then you still have to worry about Incineroar with these Intimidates. Nature's Madness are going to come out from Tapu Fini. We're mentioning it's sort of the only thing it can oh, do to wow. cause damage. <laughs> but Obama snow has got a trick up his sleeve. He's got a berry amongst all of those icicles. Um, going to be regaining a lot more health. Going to need a few more of those Nature's Madness to be coming out. But Precipice Blades, accurate here, going to be connecting onto both these Pokemon. And of course, Incineroar does not want to be taking that at all and will be KO. But now Nemanja is able to bring back in his Kyogre. Yeah, and I'm assuming that it's going to go for a Grass Knot here, which uh, is going to do a lot of damage to this Groudon already. If not, ooh, it barely knocks Just it out. Survives. Wow. Um, and a bonus now is actually one of these Pokemon that also gets uh, Ice Shard as one of his uh, potential attacking options, which might actually be enough to even <laughs> pick up the KO here. Exactly. Um, get that little but yeah, we did there. already see that this KO is actually faster, unless it's a Speed Tie, in which case it could still be interesting. Uh, you never know, uh, especially in a game one. But that um, is true. All the information has not been revealed. Yeah, but even either way, this Groudon is at minus one in terms of attack. Uh, so even if it would, were to get a Precipice Blades off, this Kyogre should be able to seal up the game here for Nemanja in a really well-played set by him. And yeah, that's what I'm also going to see <laughs> right now. Yeah, going to be that Water Spout, and this will be able to pick up the KO on the Groudon. Tapu Fini going to hang on, though, but as we've seen, it really can't do much to this Abomb no. Snow. And I think a Grass Knoll or anything here is just going to be able to clean up the game here for Nemanja. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, this Tapu Fini is just it's full <laughs> on support. And it can't do much other than Icy Wind, <laughs> Nature Madness. Uh, we've seen Gravity. Yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming. I want at the it team, to be Swagger. It it's, it, <laughs> it could definitely be Swagger. I'm that person. Um, I wouldn't I be surprised move. if it's Heal Pulse as well, maybe, mm -hmm. or something That's like Haze, if you're really scared of Xerneas. Um, yeah, but I think um, if I look at Eloy's team and his, his kind of his game plan, uh, I'm not sure if, if Trick Room is really the way he wants to go there. Because um, Nemanja brought his, his Abomina Snow, as well as his Incineroar, which are both pretty good answers to this Necrozma Trick Room mode that Eloy has. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's really the way that you that you want to go in this this type of matchup. Particularly if you get the sun up on the on the ground on on yeah. um, the other side, the Incineroar on the Mania side is going to be dealing so much damage in the sun mm -hmm. as well. It can actually do a huge chunk to the ground on. So you yeah. are just going to be weakening your own defenses. Yeah, and it's the, the funny thing about this matchup as well is that uh, if you're Elo, you're really scared of this this Kyogre Crobat combination, and then with the Abomina Snow in the back, which means uh, ground on switchings aren't even that safe either because. Um, Nemanja has his own way to switch up the weather again, um, which is really tough for him. And that's probably why he's bringing this Tapu Fini as well, uh, Eloy, in, in game one, um, which I, I understand a lot. It, it took a lot of damage, and it was able to retaliate with Icy Winds and Nature's Madness. Mm. But it just it, I'm not sure if it did enough for, for Eloy there to really uh, validate bringing it. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing the Snorlax, for example. If you're really if going, you're going for, for Trick Room, room mode, I, I wouldn't mind that at all. It's the ultimate Pokemon. <laughs> But I think it's I think, interesting. Because yeah, you, you, you can't really go Persian Snorlax, though. Because no, this, this Crobat yeah. offers a lot of pressure in terms of with that inner, fo inner focus ability, uh, usually carrying either and Haze taunt or as Taunt well. or uh, a move like that. It can also carry Whirlwind, for example. So it has a lot of, of, so <laughs> of options to kind of uh, stop setup. So, um, but we don't know what kind of Snorlax this is. Uh, if it's a more offensive Snorlax, then I think it's going to be really good in Trick Room uh, against the Manja's team. So I think it, it could be a good way to, to actually bring it either way, because once you get rid of the Crobat, the Snorlax is looking really good. Um, especially because we didn't see the Solgaleo. I was on about to say, team. I think it's very interesting Nemanja actually chose to leave one of his restricted yeah. on the bench. Um, why do you think he didn't bring it? I think in the end, uh, it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, because this Kyogre Crobat combination offers a lot of offensive pressure, but you kind of need the Abominus Snow to really make it make it count. Mm -hmm. um, and Incineroar is just so good to make sure that, that Eloy doesn't really want to set up Trick Room. Um, I think the so I definitely understand awesome. why. Yeah, so I definitely understand why he leaves Sogaleo on the bench uh, for this match. I think Sogaleo is also one of these Pokemon uh, that is specifically really used to uh, counter Xerneas. Um, and seeing that there's there are no Xerneas on both of these teams, actually. <laughs> no Xerneas. Um, we did have it in round one, though. Yeah. Um, but just yeah. not hanging out for round two. But we are jumping into game two here of round two. And it's going to be the Groudon and the Alolan Persian leading out for Eloy. Whereas Nemanja has gone for that Kyogre and the Crobat. So. Potentially wants to try and get up that Tailwind again? Uh, I would assume so, actually. Uh, we saw... Uh, one thing that we actually saw in Game 1 is that uh, Nemanja played relatively safe with his Kyogre. Because um, we saw the Persian going for a parting shot, and we saw the Kyogre protect. Um, this Kyogre could also just attack from turn 1. Um, but it all it all really depends on what Eloy has in the back in terms of switch-ins. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he brought his, uh, his Dawn across my again. Um, but I don't, I don't think he really wants to bring Tapu Fini again. I'm also really kind of surprised that he brought Persian again. Uh, even though it offers Vega pressure, the Scrobat doesn't care about Vega at all. 
And once you're in Tailwind, Persian is kind of dead weight. Uh, parting shots aren't as useful anymore at that point. Um, exactly, and it's not like um, sort of Nemanja has a lot of um, physical attackers on no. the team necessarily. You can maybe utilize foul play if he does. Um, but with all the special attackers, it's an interesting choice. Other than something like parting shot, maybe lowering that special attack stat a little bit. Um, I don't really know what else it's going to be able to do. But you can see Eloy there went down to about two seconds. He's really thinking through this turn one. So I think it is going to be crucial to sort of what's going to be happening in the next couple of yeah. turns in terms of getting that speed up. And that's exactly what we see happening. Classic. Um, situation that happened again in game one, Tailwind and Protect by Nemanja. Um, whereas Eloy, unfortunately, my German is not good enough. Um, I am unsure what moves have been selected. I think that's a rock slide right now. Yeah, that's yep. a rock slide from the ground on. Um, Crobat's not going to appreciate that. Actually, takes oh. it down into the red, but sort of the double target in a way onto that um, Kyoga. Great protect there from Nemanja. Yeah, but it took a lot of damage from the rock slide. So that's a really offensive ground on, um, or maybe not such a bulky Crobat at all. Uh, if if you're if you're Eloy, what I kind of wanted to see is because we saw Nemanja already kind of play safe in game one, mm -hmm. um, a foul play and rock slide combination maybe onto the Crobat, but on the other hand, that would just give <laughs> Abominus Snow a free, a free switch in in Tailwind. Exactly. Um, so I think that's kind of the mechanic here, which is so problematic for Eloy that he he, he can't really handle this Kyogre in Tailwind very well at all, and so he kind of wants Trick Room to set up for that, but then he has this Abominus Snow in Trick Room, so it's it's really tough for him. And at this point. You might just want to protect your crowd and maybe hope that you can parting shot uh, away with your Persian. Exactly. We have yet to see what item is on this ground yeah. as well, I believe. So it could be, looking at the damage of that Crobat, you could maybe even be looking at something like a boosting item, but it has yet to be revealed. The Obama Snow coming back onto the field. One of my, I think, new favorite Pokemon. The way it can really <laughs> challenge Groudon and Kyogre. It's so versatile. Uh, but yeah, actually, Snorlax. Snorlax. So another one of our favorite Pokemon. We've seen this so much um, in previous formats. Um, it's here again. Such a bulky Pokemon. Does barely any damage with that water spout to the Snorlax. And the Alona Persian is able to get off that foul play. So we'll be negating the special attack and we'll be shooting right back to Nemanja. Potentially could bring back the Groudon in just to get rid of the hail so there's no chip damage being um, placed about. And then could threaten um, some fire type moves onto that Abomber Snow. Um, but you do just have to worry about Tailwind. Yeah, definitely, because um, even even if you're putting Groudon, uh, but Necrozma's probably a better switch in. Yeah. Especially if Go Necrozma for Trick Room with Snorlax? <laughs> yeah, that, that actually looks pretty good right now. Uh, you still have to be really a little bit concerned because the Water Spout did actually do a lot of damage. And Grass Knot um, is actually a really high base power move against Snorlax because it is so heavy. So a combination of a Water Spout and a Grass Knot could take the Snorlax actually really low already. Um, I'm just assuming that it has a berry, so it should be able to, to live both of these attacks. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to go for Trick Room if you're Eloy here. But if you're Nemanja, this is really one of these moments <laughs> where you're going to switch in Incineroar if you have it in the back. Um, yeah, you want to just be to intimidate that in. both these Pokemon. <laughs> get a get a fake out pressure off again, uh, and this Kyogre is probably something you want in the back to counteract the weather again at, at some point. Of course, and Kyogre's out of the rain at the moment as well, so it's yeah. not going to be dealing as much damage with those water type moves. Um, so I think this Necrozum is going to be in a great position to be able to set up that Trick Room. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you can see again, Eloy really taking his time. He's got himself into this good position with sort of his Trick Room setup, but it's whether he can execute it, and it's going to be the Water Spout yeah, coming out once berry. again. Berry on Snorlax, its favorite item. Um, so going to be potentially running one of those classic Snorlaxes we see with a nice setup move going on. Um, and the Grass Knot coming out. If you're going to target a bulky, big Pokemon that's very heavy, it's oh. going to be Snorlax, but it's actually going to be the Belly Drum coming off here. Um, going to be taking it down into the red. It, of course, doesn't have its berry anymore. It's not going to regain that health, and Hail could potentially be a problem here um, if he's unable to reset the weather, but Trick Room goes up. Yeah, but it's... Oh, he barely lives that, but with Hail, he doesn't have a lot of damage at all. So I think it's actually a really good choice by Nemanja to just go for the double target. Uh, he was probably predicting the belly drum at that point, um, because then you want to make sure that you put enough pressure on this Snorlax so it can't just safely go for the belly drum. And one of the things that I would be really worried if I was Eloy now is I would be really worried about a potential Ice Shard. Uh, if this Obama Snow carries Ice Shard, this Snorlax might be in range uh, for that attack. And if you're if at that point, then Nemanja is in a really good position. But if it's able to live a potential Ice Shard, or if Nemanja simply doesn't have it, then this Snorlax is looking really good. Um, but yeah, the hard thing is you this Snorlax could also recycle. Um, which you we can't really afford at all. At no, this point. definitely not. Particularly if it's such a bulky Pokemon, you get that berry up, you keep regaining health, you're going to hang out on this field and keep mm. chipping away at your opponent's Pokemon. Um, obviously, Crobat could potentially rejoin the fray, go for something like a Haze. 
um, and get rid of that belly drum boost. Um, but Bomber Snow oh, wow. not going to be eye sharding if it does potentially have that move. It's actually leaving the field and Incineroar's back in. Just like you said, Rob, that's the Pokemon you want to get on the field at this moment in time. Um, if I was Eloy, I'd probably want my Groudon back on as well, just to stop the hail um, connecting out a little bit here. But actually, oh, he went for the recycle. Straight away going for that recycle. You can see Eloy's reaction there. He's really relieved he managed to get that off. Um, yeah, but he, he looks relieved. And on the other hand, uh, it looks like he didn't protect. It. He didn't predict that this Kyogre just went for it. He's gonna go attack. for it again. Uh, so it looks like Nemanja kind of called that bluff there, um, and I think he's just gonna go for a water spout, which is gonna put the Snorlax really low again um, with the hail chip. Uh, that's going to put it at around 70, 70 HP. Uh, so at least it's slightly getting... Uh, but you're wasting all the Trick Room turns. Yeah, if you're forcing true. it to keep recycling, then you're not going to get the damage output. No, and now with this this um, Obama Snow in the back again, uh, he makes sure that he still has like really strong Water Spouts available, uh, even if a potential Groudon switches in. Uh, we see that the Tailwind from the Manja side has now been petered out, um, but there's still quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of turns of Trick Room remaining. Uh, and the, the, I think the big question now is, does this Snorlax have Protect? If it doesn't, a Fake Out Water Spout is going to be really problematic for it. Um, if it does have Protect, then, then it's a completely different case, because then it's, I think you kind of have to Protect from the Fake Out and the Water Spout. Um, but if you're Eloy, you probably just want to go either for an attack with Snorlax or the Protect, and switch in your Groudon um, to make sure that you don't die to this Fake Out Water Spout. Um, exactly. You see him water taking his time. So and strong. Yeah. Nemanja is just making sure that he keeps up the pressure against the Snorlax, which he does really well. Uh, Snorlax, first of all, needed a turn to set up the Belly Drum. Then he wasted a turn recycling. And I think at this point, after this, he can protect. And then tr Trick Room is over. Exactly. If you can stall out the Trick Room turns here, Nemanja is going to be back in a really strong position, potentially able to get up another um, Tailwind with his Crobat and just start yeah. going back on the offensive train here. Um, but the Sun is going to be rejoining the field, so no more of those Hail Chips going to be coming out as the fake... Oh, yeah, so it is Protect Snorlax. Yeah, it's going to be Protect, so useful there for Eloy to have that option. Um, of course, Water Spout not going to be dealing as much damage anyway in the Sun. Um, oh, Scald, actually. Double target into that Snorlax. Great time to pull out the Protect. Yeah, interesting that he didn't go just for the Water Spout there. Because I, I, the way I saw it, it was kind of an, an, an obvious switch in into the crowd on there. And with the Water Spout, you still put a lot of damage onto that Pokemon. You can do over 50% um, to the yeah, Groudon. Yeah, but Nemanja actually choosing to go for the Scald instead. Um, maybe hoping for a burn. I'm not sure why he, went for, why he didn't just go for the Water Spout. Um, but at this point, you really need to protect your Kyogre. And after that, you could be in a decent position. And I think one of the Pokemon that you could maybe s potentially sack for this Snorlax um, could be the Crobat, for example, uh, which is, I think, what we're going to see right now. Yeah, going to be a switch, retrieving that Incineroar to intimidate another day. And the Crobat does come in. It's at such low health. And I think you're right there, Rob. It's a good Pokemon to um, bring in. But once again, this Kyogre going for the Protect, not going to be resetting its weather or anything like that. A Snorlax yeah, does just recycle. go for the Recycle, not going on the offensive here. Even though Trick Room is up, it's not utilizing the turns to get out damage. It just wants to put itself into a really strong position. If it manages to get its health back up and it's still got oh, that and boost, the rock slide. it's going to be so strong. But Rock Slide... Coming out, going to connect onto the Crobat. Obviously, the Protect on the Kyogre going to save it from any damage, but that Crobat has one truly been sort of um, sacked off here. Yeah, and I think calling that Protect on the Kyogre and going for another Recycle actually was really well played by Eloy um, because that actually probably puts the, the Snorlax out of Water Spout and potential Grass Knot or Blizzard range. Um, so that means he has to bring in the Audius Incineroar right now. Um, but that's still really problematic for Nemanja because this Incineroar is definitely in Presbus Blaze range. And he can only fake out one of the two, and this Snorlax is belly drummed. And <laughs> after Presbus Blades, this Incineroar is going to go down. So um, even though we thought Eloy was kind of in the back end and having all this pressure against him, this just keeping his Snorlax alive really gives him the upper hand at this point. Exactly. Snorlax, we were sort of saying in the team preview before this game, Snorlax would be a great Pokemon yeah. choice if he goes for that Trick Room strategy. And I think he's demonstrated really well why you can't ignore it, no. particularly once it gets this boosted up. And that allows your partner Pokemon, something like the Groudon, more than a crow's to start dealing out some more offensive pressure while your opponent has to worry about the big Snorlax on the field. Yeah, exactly. And I think the way that he sacked this Crobat as well probably shows that it's maybe uh, one of these taunt Crobats and not a, not a haze Crobat. Because mm. uh, otherwise, that's definitely something that you <laughs> You want. would want that Pokemon You're not going to sack that when there's a Belly Drum <laughs> Snorlax on the field. Exactly. Uh, so that at least it gives, a, gives him a little bit of information there. Um, 
Yeah, it's going to be really tough for, for Nemanja at this point. Yeah, he changes up the weather once again, though. Going to be bringing his rain mode back into the back as the hail jumps out. As the fake actually this time goes into that Snorlax. So Groudon is free to go for a press for space, but I believe I saw an avoid. It was actually the Rock Slide, so it doesn't change oh, it up. Oh, wow. Yeah, it lives. Doesn't pick up the KO, and we did see a Bomber Snow sort of dodge out of the way there. But this now puts Incineroar on that position where he's got his berry activated again. Yeah, I didn't want to say this before, but I now I'm 100% sure that this is actually a choice band Groudon. I agree, yeah. Uh, especially judging from the damage onto that Crobat already. Um, and especially now where a Presbus Blaze would have been definitely the better play. Uh, it going for another Rock Slide definitely shows me that this is actually a choice locked uh, Groudon there. Um, which actually maybe gives Nemanja another shot back into this game, potentially. If he can identify that, he can maybe sort of utilize some of his other moves, target it down. Yeah. It's not going to be dealing the same type of attack bonus. No. And I mean, Presbus Blaze, Rock Slide, they're both inaccurate. Yeah, and maybe a Flare Blitz combined with a, a Grass Knot could, have, could be enough. Uh, I'm not sure if you maybe if maybe switching in the Abominus Snow was a good play there, because then maybe you wanted the Flare Blitz in the Sun and a potential Ice Beam from Kyogre. Um, I'm not sure if it would have been enough, though. Uh, Snorlax, if this looks like to be like a really bulky Snorlax, mm. uh, which could have just been able to take the combination of attacks. And he really needs his Kyogre in the back for the Groudon. We're going to be bringing that Groudon into the back, potentially resetting a choice band move that it was going for. And then a Krozma comes back onto the field. Um, going to be the Protect oh. coming out from the Obama Snow. So just wants to go on the defensive here, um, potentially knowing it was the target from a Snorlax, um, potentially, as Flare Blitz does come out from the Incineroar. Going into that Snorlax, probably hoping for a burn, going to deal itself a little bit of damage in recoil, oh. but the Protect from a Bomber Snow saving itself from the damage of that Snorlax. Wow, and that is actually a really good turn for Nemanja there. Um, because we already saw that this Necrozma is so slow, and Snorlax is now definitely in Grass Knot range. So, and this Necrozma should be in Flare Bits range, so that actually puts him really back into this game, calling the right Protect there. And... Yeah, Eloy is, is now again kind of in the back foot just because he lost the speed advantage. And with that, the low amount of HP that he has in his Necrozma also has no way to really reset it at all. Um, but at least the Snorlax can definitely still protect. And maybe if he at some point brings in his, his Choice Band Groudon again, uh, he still has an option. And I think that's what he's going for here. He's going to sack his Necrozma. Exactly, just to give him that switch back in to reset up the sun, get off some good damage. Snorlax protecting itself. Um, as we see the knockoff actually come out from the Incineroar, we yep. did see in game one it was weakness policy, but with that little health, you don't mind knocking that off, it's not going to activate, there's no HP left to keep no. the Pokemon on the field. But this does give him the option to bring that sun back, and if he does want to go for something like the Precipice Blades, it's going to be deal as long as it connects, yep. it's going to be dealing some good amount of damage, even if he does switch in the Kyogre particularly. If it is that Choice Band variant, it's still going to be dealing well over 50%. Yeah, definitely. Um, but he has to still worry about this Obama Snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, and so that's, that's still really tricky for him. And I think if you're in a manja, you probably want to just double this, this Snorlax here with a Flare Blades and a Grass Knot. Um, so no matter what Groudon locks itself into, um, if it is a Fire Punch to a Bubba Snow or a Presbus Blades, um, but at this point he could also just go for a Rock Slide and hope for the best. It's, it's super effective damage onto uh, a Bubba Snow and it should pick up the Knockout on Incineroar as well. So with that 30% flinch chance as well, could just definitely seal up the game for him here. When there's a rock slide, there is a way. Always, it's a phrase yeah. we hear all the time. Um, but of course, if you go for the Fire Punch into that Obama Snow, you do have to worry about the Kyogre in the back, bring yeah. it in the rain. It will be four times effective, so still it will be dealing still a lot. It should still probably pick up the KO, I would, I would assume. But you just you almost wouldn't want to risk it. But it's no. Choice Band, I, I would still rate it quite highly. But then if you switch in the um, Kyogre on that slot, I think Kyogre yeah, is going to be able to take go it. For it. Rock Slide coming out, does connect, does a huge amount of damage. He to needs that this flinch, because with the Kyogre in the back, we, we saw it's faster than the Groudon, so he actually needs this flinch. Are we going to see it? First, we're going to see it munch on the berry. Yeah, but if this, if this Obama Snow can knock out the Snorlax here, this Kyogre for Nemanja should win. Oh, and he oh, gets the flinch. Oh, he does. Gets the flinch, and Snorlax is able to recycle up some oh, health as wow. well. Oh, Nemanja does not look happy about that at all, and quite rightly so. No, that's really unfortunate. That's actually a game-winning Rock Slide flinch there, because now, with the Kyogre in the back, um, he will not even have the Weather Advantage anymore, because... Um, Eudor still has three Pokemon remaining, and he can just sack his Persian at any point. Uh, wow, that's really unfortunate for Nemanja there, because I think if it didn't flinch and he would have went for the Grass on the Snorlax, this game would have been locked up with this faster Kyogre in the back. Um, 
But yeah, on the other hand, which is good news for us and good news for you guys as viewers, potentially a game three. It looks like we're going to go <laughs> to game three potentially. Exactly. We, have, we couldn't give you all of round one, so we made sure these games would be very intense for <laughs> round two. Um, but as you can see, the ground on it is going to shoot right back to Eloy here. He knows that if he gets the sun up, he's going to be really be eliminate, um, limiting um, both of Nemanja's Pokemon and that Alolan Persian is going to jump back out. Snorlax going for the protect though, so I think a really good strategic play here from Eloy, just getting himself ready for his end game position where he can really threaten both of these Pokemon. Yeah. Water spout coming out from the Kyogre though, so even in the sun, that will be dealing a huge amount of damage to the Groudon. We've seen already the Kyogre is faster, um, but will it be enough to allow his partner Abomas Snow to clean up the game? I, with the Snorlax and the sort of the boost that it's got, I don't think he's got a way to take it down. No, um, well, <laughs> there's there's still one way um, <laughs> because a critical hit Water Spout true should actually knock out the Groudon. I feel I feel like. Um, so if he, if he actually <laughs> gets a critical hit onto this Groudon, um, Snorlax, it looks like it doesn't have a spread move, uh, which means that a, a Water Spout and then a Grass Knot should already do a lot of damage to it. Uh, after which it might struggle to win against those two Pokemon remaining on the Manja side. So I think at this point he has to cross his fingers, hope for this critical <laughs> hit. Uh, if it doesn't happen, I'm pretty sure that the favor lies, in, lies at Eloy's side here. Um, I mean, but yeah, you flinched, never know. So. It's Pokemon, so... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He got the flinch. Maybe Luck's going to go his way yeah. um, for this turn, but we will have to see. It's quite, it's quite a difference between a 30% chance <laughs> and a critical hit chance. You can have your lot, fingers lot crossed. <laughs> but, yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're rooting for Demandra here, definitely keep your fingers crossed at this point. Um, yeah. And he's actually going for Skull instead. Yeah, he right. wants to try and burn this oh, Snorlax, and he gets which it. is what he does. So he's going to be limiting the damage output a little bit here. And um, what has Grad unlocked into? It's going to be the Fire Punch yeah. into the Abomma Snow. Um, going to be easily picked picking up the KO there. I think Obama's going to take a rest, get yourself ready for game three. Um, as we see the return coming out from the Snorlax. Um, thanks to the burn, won't be picking up the KO. We see the leftovers activate again, um, but I don't think it's Kyogre's going to be able to stop the damage coming out the next turn. No. Um, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I don't think I agree with that skull play there. Uh, I think you needed to critical hit or uh, this crowd on um, because this Obama Snow was your biggest damage output against Snorlax with these high-powered Grass Knots. Uh, this Kyogre and Sun wasn't going to do too much against the Snorlax either way. Uh, so I don't really agree with that last play by Nemanja there. Um, not sure if he really played to it the best to his out as he possibly could there. Um, maybe it's also a little bit of that stress because he thought, probably thought that he'd locked the game up there. Um, but it, it, it gives him a little bit of time. You see him taking his time here. He's probably making sure that he knows uh, a, a good game three plan. Yeah. Um, because I think just the way he played, um, he played it pretty well so in, in this Again, game too as well. He was doing a lot of his board switching and trying yeah. to get himself into a more advantageous position but I think Eloy making the adaption to bring the Snorlax and going for that adaption. Trick Room mode even though he only got Trick Room up the once yeah. that Snorlax was then put in a position by that speed change on mm. the field um, that it's able to still threaten throughout the rest of the game. Yeah. Protect from Kyogre just going to stall things out a little bit more going to get obviously a little bit of leftovers recovery but I think in the long run this isn't going to be um, victorious for Nemanja but he could also be using this time to um, get that game three plan set mm. up. Um, you definitely want to utilize all the opportunities you can to get a strategy in place. Uh, but do you think he's going to make any drastic changes? Uh, well, he, I think he's kept the same four Pokemon games one and two. Yeah, and I think I think these four Pokemon are the right kind of Pokemon to bring. Um, yeah, the thing is, even though you do kind of struggle against this, this kind of trick room mode from Eloy's side, I'm not sure why Eloy is actually kind of <laughs> reacting so much to these burns, uh, which I think don't think should matter at this point. Uh, because of return, you should be able to pick up the KO it's here. It's just a matter of time. Um, and Kyogre yeah. will now be returning back to his trainer. And we're going to see a Game 3. So very excited to have one so Definitely. early on here in Frankfurt. Yeah, but uh, going back to your question, uh, I don't think the Manja really has to change up much. Uh, I think the four that he brings um, make a lot of sense against Eloy's team. Uh, maybe he just has to um, make sure that he brings the Incineroar earlier. Um, offer a knockoff pressure against the Snorlax. Because mm -hmm. um, he always let this, this Crobat Kyogre mode. Um, and I'm kind of n not 100% sure if he needs that speed advantage. No, he could utilize the Crobat slightly differently. Yeah. Um, we've yet to see the full moveset on the Crobat, I believe. Mm. If it's packing something like Taunt or Haze, yeah. he can maybe be utilizing that a little bit better to shut down that yeah. Snorlax early on. If you get that Taunt Definitely. off, it can't belly drum. Right. So then yeah, you're exactly. stopping it. And uh, you at least learn a lot of valuable information. Because um, I don't think in game one he really learned that it, this was a choice band Groudon. Um, but he definitely probably he should have noticed that into after game two for sure, which should give him more options going into this this game three here. Um, so I think in terms of information, uh, Nemanja probably won that here. Um, Eloy kind of had to pull out a bag of tricks to win that game two. Uh, went for a completely different mode, 
Uh, Wanda Mancha just kind of stays for the same way, but I, I still don't really see him bring Solgaleo or Tapu Koko here because they don't really help too much against the Strickler mode. They certainly don't. The Tapu Koko would work kind of well against his own team yeah. um, with the Crobat and the Kyogre, but against Eloy's, I don't see it really being utilized no. too well at all. Potentially against the Tapu Fini, but as we saw in game two, he dropped that for the Snorlax, and I think... I think that was definitely the best play. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're necessarily going to see Tapu Fini making an appearance here. No, and, and yeah, one other thing why you might want to bring Solgaleo, if it's if it's something like the Life Orb set um, with a potential superpower, it could do a lot of damage to Snorlax. But we've seen Elo Eloy bring this is Alolan Persian every game so far. Um, and a foul play from Alolan Persian does a lot of damage to Solgaleo, uh, especially to the non dusk form. Um, because that has just a little bit less bulk and a little bit less, uh, yeah, it, it, it won't, it won't, wasn't, <laughs> it doesn't want to take this foul play at all. So I don't think, I don't think he wants to change it up anything uh, if you're Nemanja, but maybe, maybe an Incineroar Kyogre lead um, or something like that could maybe help him a little bit more. Just something to stop him getting in that position with the Snorlax and the yeah. Necrozma. Um, if you either, s you could be stopping the Trick Room, you could be stopping mm -hmm. the Belly Drum, uh, but I think he needs to stop Eloy getting into that position because he was able to sort of strengthen himself really strongly from there and then just run through the rest of the team. And don't go wrong, Nemanja had so many great options. He has that Abomber Snow, which is really proving difficult for Eloy to counter. Um, in both games, we've seen it last on the field for so long, even with its berry as well, keeping it on the field that little bit longer. Um, but just at the end, was able to close it up with the Fire Punch from that Groudon. But if he's unable to do that early, you're on. Um, obviously, a bomb snow is helped out by the Kyogre with the rain as well. Um, it's going to be able to cause a lot of trouble for his team, so he needs to get rid of that Pokemon quickly as well. Yeah, so I think uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see from Eloy if we see the Persian uh, Groudon mode again with that Trick Room mode in the back, um, because that just offers the, the, the kind of the, the, the how do you call it the parting shot pressure right yes. from the start. <laughs> and yeah, we see the Manja just not change it up at all. Nope, sticking um, with probably it. bringing the same four again if I had to guess. Yeah, I think he's definitely got the best four as his option. And Elor changed it up again. Yeah, it's going to be Necrozma and the Incineroar. So um, rain's going to be setting on the field straight away. No weather war at the moment, just going to be the rain. Um, but I feel like um, Nemanja is able to potentially go for the same type of thing. Again, fake out from the Incineroar is not going to stop that um, Crobat. But you don't want to set up Tailwind when you're facing that Necrozma. Potentially Taunt would be a good call if you're packing that move. Yeah, um, and... You usually don't run Crobat without something like that. <laughs> Either Taunt or Whirlwind. Uh, it's one of these support Pokemon. It, it needs a way to stop these. And this it needs to room. support now. <laughs> and this Kyogre is looking really strong at the moment. So I think if you're if you're in the manga, you probably just want to go for a Taunt Water Spout. Uh, Groudon doesn't want to switch into a Water Spout, even in the sun. It's going to take a lot of damage. Um, so I'm not sure if, if I really like this lead from Eloy there. Um, maybe he's, he's trying to focus on getting rid of this Crobat as soon as possible. But I think that that choice meant Groudon was actually better in, in, in getting rid of the Crobat. Well, then is actually going to switch right back out and Groudon's going to rejoin the field. So the Sun going to come up, potentially boosting the Flare Blitzes from its partner Incineroar here, which will be dealing a huge amount of damage yeah. boosted up by that Sun. Um, and obviously weakening any of the Water-type moves coming out. But it is a risk if it's going for a Water Spout. The Taunt coming out, being revealed by that Crobat going into the Groudon. Choice man Groudon really not going to mind that at all. As Water Spout does come out from the Kyogre, um, it takes the ground on down to 50%, but thanks to the sun, that bulky oh, Incineroar is able to survive that really easily and goes for the U-turn. So um, Eloy able to now really shuffle up his team once again with the sun. Yeah, I kind of thought there for a minute that uh, Eloy might have just wanted to go for a, fl a fire boosted Flare Blitz into mm -hmm. this Crobat, um, potentially picking up the one hit KO. Uh, but he decides to reposition himself and bring in that uh, Necrozma back in. And yeah, which is kind of an interesting play, but on the other hand, We've already seen this Kyogre is faster, and this Crobat has shown Taunt, and it can just go for Taunt again. Yeah, and the Necrozma does have to worry about that Taunt 100%. And we've, we've seen everything from Necrozma, and it doesn't threaten Kyogre at all. It has Stone Edge, it has uh, Sun Steel Strike, Strike, it has Trick Room, and it has moon, uh, Moonlight. Moonlight, yes, so that's very true. this Kyogre is pretty safe to just go for another Water Spout, and this Crobat can just go for Taunt, and I'm not really sure if I agree with the U-turn there. No, it's definitely put him into a tricky position. Um, the Groudon doesn't have access to U-turn, but it will be leaving the field, and Snorlax is here once again. Yeah. So I think Eloy is sort of putting all his eggs in one basket and potentially trying to get that Trick Room up, but Taunt, just such an obvious play there from the Crobat. Yeah. Um, as Water Spout comes out once again from this Kyogre, um, going to be dealing very minimal damage, and if I was Nemanja, I'd probably want to get it off the field as soon as I can, oh, um, wow. just to reset up the um, rain, but no Trick Room here from the Necrozma goes for that Stone Edge. Yeah. Doesn't get the KO, though. No, it doesn't pick up the KO, so that's at least something there. Um, but I think Eloy definitely needs to uh, try harder to get rid of this Crobat, because once that is gone, uh, he can actively try and set up the Trick Room, but he really needs to make sure that he doesn't take too much damage uh, on his Necrozma. 
Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he maybe tries to go for Morning Sun here, maybe just a return into this Crobat. Because um, this Necrozma is definitely kind of his win condition in setting up that Trick Room, so he needs to make sure that he keeps that around. Um, but at least Akaiyo is into the Sun right now, so it's not going to do too much damage. Um, even if he switches in this, this Abominus Snow, we've seen, we've seen the damage. It shouldn't do more than 50% to that uh, Necrozma, uh, as well as to that Snorlax. Mm -hmm. But the Crobat's going to cause trouble with Taunt. It can yeah. now go into that Snorlax. Um, and we were sort of saying, why isn't Crobat using Taunt before? It's using it all over the place mm -hmm. at the moment. However, it's returned back to its trainer, and it is that Abomber Snow coming yeah. out onto the field. Um, going to be resetting up the hail. So changing the weather. So the water type moves will be doing neutral now. Um, that helps out Kyoga a little bit. Um, but I feel like Nemanja might be going for something like, oh, he goes again for the water spout. Just going to be dealing. You can see the difference That's already. That's a lot of damage still, yeah. Just from the weather change, it really is quite dramatic. So Abomber Snow really helping out Kyoga there. As Return comes out from this Snorlax. It's not boosted, but that will certainly weaken some of the damage that um, Kyogre is going to be taking, in addition to that little bit of chip. Yeah, and it, we saw actually the Stone Edge miss on the Kyogre there, um, helping Nemanja quite a bit there, because uh, it would have been quite nice chip damage onto that Kyogre. Mm. And how this, this Necrozma actually took a lot of damage from a Water Spout. And I think if you're, if you're Nemanja, just going for a, a Water Spout and a Grass Knot into that Necrozma, Probably should probably pick up the KO even in the sun. Um, judging from that range, this because I think it is quite a heavy Pokemon. Yeah, if you double into it, particularly if it's going, um, I mean, because it it's taunted, but yeah, if you want to get that off the field, because at the end of the day, if the taunt wears out, you can then yeah. start getting up your trick room again. So I think Nemanja really does want to target it down, and mm -hmm. I think quite right, it's quite bulky. Um, or potentially the Kyogre could be going for something like a Scold, um, it doesn't want to maybe go for the water spout due to the health drop that it's received and the skull could also potentially get the burn yeah. but once again if you just keep an eye on Eloy's timer he is really running down the yeah. clock one second left he is really trying to think about not just this turn but a couple of turns ahead as well um, but once again Groudon going to be re-jumping onto the field here setting up the sun really wants to negate um, potentially some of the skull damage that could be coming out here but yeah, so is he going to lift this with the Necrozma I'm not sure I don't, I don't like how Eli played this so far he took so much damage on his Necrozma we see the water spout come out Groudon should at least be able to take that, judging from the previous damage. It's 20, 20 hit points. No, that should be in Grass Knot range. I'm, oh, it's actually, oh, it's actually a blizzard. blizzard. Um, the ground oh, avoided the, the attack, but Necrozma does take that. Is it enough? Oh, it is. Wow. And Necrozma will return to Eloy, um, but as well, if that Blizzard had hit that Groudon, that would be KO2, and yeah. he would have lost both as Restricted in the one turn. And e even, if it, yeah, but, but even if it didn't KO, like now, we, we already saw the Skyogre's faster, and it's a choice with Groudon. It's pretty safe if you're, if you're just going to protect right now. Um, but at least you can bring in your Snorlax, and maybe you need... This is kind of one of those positions where you could definitely try to set up the, the Trick Room here. Um, which is, I think, what he's going to go for now. Yeah. But it's not, it's not such a free Belly Drum at all, because... Uh, if you're in a Manja, you probably just want to go for a Water Spout Grass Knot onto the Snorlax, which um, makes sure that it's, it's, you put still a lot of pressure on it, um, that it kind of needs to recycle afterwards, because it, it hasn't fucked this berry yet. Um, but, but it likes to have its berry exactly. accessible. Exactly, and with the Belly Drum, you still lose 50% of your health either way. So a Water Spout and a Grass Knot are still going to do a lot of damage, and make sure that Snorlax is probably in the red afterwards. Exactly. It's not like the outside of Trick Room does really depend on its berry and needs to yeah. make sure that it has it all the time. It's one of those amazing role reversals. In sort of in Trick Room, you can go on the offensive. Your opponents have to worry about it. But when you're out of Trick Room and you haven't got that boost, you've got to worry about constantly taking the damage and recycling so that you can survive the mm -hmm. next turn. Um, but Eloy going to switch up again, going to be bringing that Incineroar back into the field, going to be intimidating both these Pokemon. Um, again, both of Nemanja is not really going to mind that too much. As yeah, is this Nemanja's Incineroar then? Yeah. Yeah, it can only come right back out and fire off a more crucial Intimidate, let's say, against the Incineroar and the Snorlax of Eloy here. Um, of course, we've got then the fake outs in the next turn, but this Groudon, um, sorry, this Kyogre is going to be able to get off a move. Yeah, yeah that's a big water spout then. Uh, this Incineroar should be, yeah, should easily take that. Um, but it make sure that the Snorlax actually blocks this berry already. Yeah. Um, so it's putting that at a little bit of a disadvantage. I, I mean, yeah, it kind of has to go for Belly Drum if it wants to do anything here. Um, but it's just going to recycle. recycle. Okay, I can also respect that. Um, making sure, because this Snorlax is definitely his win condition at this point. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really tricky now, because Nemancha has his own fake art pressure now again on the field. And, and they now that the berry is sun. actually recycled, mm. uh, Incineroar is pretty free to go for a knockoff here. Uh, I'm sure that if you're Eloy, you probably want to go for a fake out into the opposing Incineroar, probably maybe, maybe risking it, because um, you can't afford a knockoff at all. And... But this might be a good opportunity for Nemanja to switch out to Kyogre and maybe bring out his, his Crobat. Exactly. I think he needs to get the rain back up on his side at the yeah. moment. The sun this is Kyogre is not doing anything at this point. Exactly. Um, it's really causing a lot of trouble. Yeah. 
um, having that stun up. But I think you're right there with the Incineroar on the manual side. It can go for a knockoff, go fake out. It can go for a stun boosted flare blitz. Yeah. It's got so many options at the moment. But I think you're right. Getting rid of the berry and really sort of um, negating a lot of Snorlax's potential mm -hmm. um, will put him in a really great position to not only make sure that Snorlax isn't going to be a threat like it was in game two, uh, but also just an end game position. It can't regain its berry. But going to be the switch and Crobat, like you said, Rob, coming in here. I think it might be KO to bring that, you know, free okay. switch. And he gets back the first take out. That's really important. Yeah, it gets that onto the. Um, Gets out onto the Snorlax and the Fake Out's return was going actually into the Kyogre, but Crobat actually loves being KO'd by that right now. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mind too much <laughs> anyway, no. Because um, Kyogre's going to jump right back in. Yeah, and because now if you're, I think if you're Nemanja, all you have to click now, if you, if you click Water Spout and uh, knock off into Snorlax, you make sure that it can't use its berry anymore after that, and you make sure that it can't go for a Belly Drum then. And... If you're Eloy, if you want to prevent that, you have to switch in your Groudon, which me which will go down to a Water Spout. So at this point, yeah, what what do you? What, yeah, it's really well, I mean, it's really tough for Eloy then. You could switch in the Groudon, get the Sun up, but y like you said, you're going to be KO'd by a Water type move, yeah. um, regardless of the Sun. And then as long as Nemanja is able to keep both his Incineroar and his Kyogre on the field, um, he does have three Pokemon, so he's able to switch out and reset that rain actually, again. Yeah, I think actually the best play for Eloy at this point is probably to bring in his Groudon. Oh, I thought I would I would. I would think he would bring it into the other slot, actually, and then maybe go for a U-turn um, to get the fake out and then the belly drum pressure afterwards. Because um, now you can't you can't afford to knock off on the Snorlax. Uh, so he has to protect here, I assume. Oh, he's not. No, no protect. And Water Spout coming out from that Kyogre. As you can see, easily picking up the KO on that Groudon, even in Sun. It was on such low health. And Kyogre still so, so strong. Um, as the yeah. Incineroar does go for the knockoff, so it's going to do a good amount of damage. There still is the item, so it does get that little extra boost, but most crucially, knocks off the berry. Return coming out from that Snorlax, going to weaken the water spout damage, but, you know, leftovers, we sort of said it was a really quirky choice, but I am loving it on this team. It's working out really well for him so far. And, yeah, oh, I, I think what I would have liked to see here is I would have liked to switch in the other way around. Because um, that way, the Incineroar would have probably lived the Water Spout. Could have went for a U-turn, and then afterwards you have this fake out Belly Drum pressure. Um, and you, you don't risk the knockoff. And now he actually kind of lost his only win condition here. So I don't really agree with that at all. Uh, if he went for the switch in the other way around, I think he still had a shot, definitely. Um, but right now, without the Barry on Snorlax, um, and with Nemanja just having the option of switching out his Kyogre and then bringing it back in later, uh, I don't know if there's anything really that Elo can do at this point. So I'm not sure if he really uh, fought that turn uh, through completely. No, exactly. And one thing I have just noticed as well, unfortunately with our setup, we're a little limited to looking at the time. Oh, yeah. It looks like we've actually hit the round time. Um, so potentially we could be looking at the last couple of moves and that mm. will be determining what these players will be doing. You can see our judge there on the stream side really sort of focusing in on the game. Um, going to be the protect though from the Kyogre as the Abomas Snow switches in once again. Going to be getting some more chip damage off with that hail, but yeah, Kyogre... Good, good prediction by Eloy there, uh, knowing that an Incineroar wants to switch out. Yeah. Uh, going for the Flare Blitz there. And, and if this <laughs> is actually going into time, could be a big KO there. It takes a but huge amount in recoil as well. Oh, yeah, but it, but it still shouldn't matter. Um, because even though the time is 16. low, I think we're not at the point yet where we have three uh, turns remaining. Uh, I see the judges there at the table, and I think we are we are actually at time. Yeah, our time is clocking back up, so we've actually gone past the 50 minutes. Yeah, um, so that actually, I'm not sure at which turn we are then uh, out of these, these times, but uh, I think if you're in a manja and if you get one more turn, um, then you should have the game locked up. Uh, because Incineroar usually don't carry Protect. So a Water Spout and a Flare Blitz into Snorlax should actually clean up the board. But then it really depends if the Manja has the chance to go for it or if the timer is actually being called. Um, well, it, it's the situation at the moment. They've got two Pokemon each. Yeah. Um, the um, Incineroar on Eloy's side is going to be KO'd by Hail regardless at the end of this turn. Oh, right. So yeah. I feel like, Funomani, you, know, you just want to go complete. If you've, if you've still got a turn remaining, it looks, by the way, the judge is there. You can see the head judge there as well, yeah. observing the game um, as Water Spout comes up from the Kyogre. So I don't think there was anything Eloy no. could do, even regardless of the time in this situation, to be able to close that out. Nemanja was in just such a more dominant no, offensive No, and he had position. a lot more health on his Pokemon as well. Yeah. Um, yeah so. But Snorlax lasting till the end once again. Yeah, <laughs> it did. Yeah, and I think it just... I, I like the four that Eloy brought. I just I, I his game plan in, in game two uh, made a lot more sense. He just started off with his Choiceman Groudon, made sure he got rid of the Crobat as soon as possible, and then he set up Trick Room. Uh, while in game three, I don't agree. He let he let Necrozma and he just let it get taunted and let it take mm. a lot of water spouts. And at that point, at some, when the Crobat was finally out of the field, uh, out of the picture, there, 
the Necrozma was already too low to even try to set up Trick Room, um, which I think was his big downfall here, and which makes Nemanja actually take this game three here. Exactly, and I think changing, he, he led the same both, um, all three games to yeah. Nemanja, yeah. but changing up his strategy in game three, going for the Taunts as opposed to the Tailwind, mm -hmm. I think really managed to shut Eloy down, and it made him have to think about it a lot more. Yeah. Um, so Nemanja will be taking this round two, and what was an epic um, best of three set there. Unfortunately, we won't actually have time to grab him for an interview. Um, the stream does start a little bit later to the main tournament and as this game went on so long we want to make sure that all our judges are running on time and we're not upsetting anyone that end so um stay tuned though because round three will be coming up very very soon so don't go anywhere trainers we'll be right back